Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to share with you my new set of 28 watercolor brush pens from Chocola. I hope you'll stick around, see how these work, and then find out how you can win a set for yourself. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. A few weeks ago, I was contacted by Chocola to see if I would like to try out some of their products and do a video on them. Originally, they wanted to send me their chalk markers and a chalkboard, which, hey, if I had any kind of word art skills at all, I totally would have taken. But I'm not really one for hand lettering, but I did see that they had some watercolor brush pens, and I asked if I could try those out, and they said yes, and then about a week later, my set arrived. So what I'm gonna do today is unbox these, show you what you get in here, and then at the end of the video, I'll tell you how you can enter to win a set of these for yourself. But even if you don't win, later I have a special code to share with you for an extra 10% off your order. Let's go ahead and see what's in here. In the box, not only do you get your watercolor brush pens, but you get a pad of 15 sheets of watercolor paper. These are just under six inches and a little over eight inches. It is acid-free cold press watercolor paper. So that was a nice bonus that I didn't know what I was gonna get. And I didn't have any actual watercolor paper here, so this was great to get this to be able to try it out. You also get two water brush pens. I have already used the smaller one and it's more of a fine point. And then the second one has more of a wide tip, probably for bigger areas of color. I haven't used this one yet, but I do plan on using it in one of my videos. Now, when you get your set, they might not look quite like this. I did try to put mine together in color families. And if I would flip these around, that might be easier to see, but I try to do rainbow order, and then I just put the black marker in with this set because that's where it fit. One thing I did notice is that on the back of the box, it has all of the colors listed, but that color is nowhere on the marker. So that's one thing that I would probably change if I could, that if I'm gonna make a swatch page, I would probably put a number on these in Sharpie marker and cover it with some scotch tape, just so if I wanted a specific color, I could go to that marker. Also, when I first got these, I thought, oh, well, that's not much color variety. I bought all of the Clean Color Real Brush markers. I probably bought the largest pack I could find at the time because I thought I needed all those markers. But I will tell you that after using these for a while, you can get so many different shades out of a single marker that a set like this probably would have been better for me to start with so I wouldn't have been so overwhelmed with colors. But we'll kind of get more into the shading of that in a little bit. What I'm gonna do now is show you how they work and blend on different kinds of cardstock. So off camera, I went ahead and cut down some pieces of different cardstocks I have here in my craft room. I labeled each one, and then I went ahead and stamped and black embossed this apple image. This image is from Lawn Fawn's Thanks a Bushel stamp set. The different cardstocks I pulled out to use are the Chocola watercolor paper that came with the markers. Since many of us might use our Copic markers, I got out some Nina Solar White, an 80 pound cover. This third one is Strathmore Bristol Smooth, and this is the cardstock that I usually use when I am using my other watercolor markers, just because you don't have to use water with them, you can put it right onto this paper and then blend out. And finally, I just got out a piece of my cheap Hobby Lobby white cardstock. I just want to show you that you can use these markers even if you don't have this other cardstock. I know right now it's kind of hard to get out and get it, and most of us are already going to have what we need in our craft area to be able to use these markers. 
I went ahead and pulled out some of the Chocola markers that I'm going to use for this. I have covered my work surface with a cutting board from the Dollar Tree just so I don't ruin my background. And for my palette, I actually just laminated a half sheet of white cardstock. You could always put your watercolor brushes onto a regular palette, a mixed media mat, or even an acrylic stamp block. But I made this with the white background so I could see my colors better. And I had all this stuff right here in my room. I didn't have to go out and buy anything else. Let me go ahead and show you how you can get different shades with one marker. I'm gonna start out by using my red. And I'm just going to scribble some here onto my palette or my laminated piece of cardstock. And then I'm going to get out my water brush. You just pick up a little bit. I really don't squeeze the water out at this point since I want it kind of full strength. You'll see here that it gets lighter as you go from left to right. Now if you wanted something darker, you pick up that red again. Go ahead and get your base layer started. I like to let that dry just a little bit, and then I'm gonna pick up some more red. Because this paper is made for water, it does take this layering really well. You might find that maybe with you know the cheaper, the Hobby Lobby white, you might not be able to layer as many colors or use as much water. Now, if you think these are too dark or not the correct shade, you can squeeze a little bit of water here, mix it up, and then you have a lighter shade. So you'll see there that from that one marker, you can actually get lots of different shades. And you can always mix these together if you wanted to make a different purple. You could do some red and blue and mix that up. I really like that about these. You'll see there I was just able to wipe that up really easily. And now I want to show you how I'm going to color an actual apple. I am going to go ahead and start with that full strength red. And I like to emboss my images. It just helps me stay in the lines, but you do not have to do that. I'm going to pick up some of that red. And then I'm going to figure out kind of where my light is hitting. And I'm going to start my darker color on the opposite side of that. So if my light were coming up here, I'm going to start down at the bottom and kind of the right left side, put most of that color and then pull it up into that other area. To add a little bit more shadow, I'm going to go ahead and go back in. I went ahead and just hit that with my heat gun a little bit to dry it so I can layer up even some more there. And there is a look at my red apple. Let me go ahead and show you this green, kind of the same process there. You will want to make sure you get all the red out of your brush now. So I usually just squeeze a little extra water and then I'll come over here and pick up some green. I'm gonna go ahead and stop with the watercolor paper for now and show you how it works on the other types of paper. Here, I'm gonna pull in the Nina Solar White. And we'll go ahead and do a little sample over here so you can see how it spreads out. It actually goes on here pretty smoothly. Right now, I'm not going to go ahead and dilute this any to show you a lighter shade because I actually want to go ahead and use it for my image so I don't have to wipe it up and start over. But you'll see here that you can just keep layering that. This is one of the card socks, so you're going to have to watch how much water you actually put on the paper. On this one, it did start to pill up a little bit. I probably should have hit that with the heat gun before I layered on that next color.
Now we'll move on to the Bristol Smooth. And on this, there's a couple different ways you can use it. You can do the water coloring where you use the palette like I have been. This is a paper too that is made to take some liquid. So you can color like that, or you can get your pen and go directly to the apple and blend it. So I would just put my marker where I want the shadows to be. And then I'm going to bring in my water brush to blend that out. And you'll see that it's a nice smooth blend from here. Every once in a while, I do want to wipe that brush off. Then I'm going to go in and add some more shadows in there and do the same thing just to layer that up. You can see here that using this directly onto the Strathmore Bristol Smooth is a much bolder look. Go ahead and do one with the green as well. And here you can just see the difference in vibrancy between the two. And then finally, I just want to show you what this is going to look like on just standard white cardstock. Now with this, you do have to be careful with how much water and how many layers you're adding because this paper is definitely not made for water, but it will work. So here is a look at each of the different papers that I use today. I'm not going to do a completed project today, but I will be back over the next few days to use the markers on different papers in different ways and do completed projects. Here in just a little bit, I'm going to tell you how you can win a set of the watercolor brush pens for yourself. But before I do that, I want to tell you about a couple things. First of all, I do have my 10K subscriber giveaway going on right now, and I need to give you a secret word for today's video. Now, if you don't know what to do with these secret words or how to enter, I do have my video linked down below so you can go check that out. Today's secret word is chocola. And secondly, I wanted to let you know about my discount code. If you use this link right here, which I do have linked in the description box below, and use the code AliciaE10 at checkout, you're going to save 10% on your order. Now yesterday I tested it out getting one of these shipped to me here in the United States. Right now the set is on sale, I think it was about $29. I was able to save an additional 10% and it shipped free to me. So if you can't wait to see if you won the brush pens or you want to order some of their other products like the chalkboard markers, chalkboards, letter boards, they have acrylic paint, paint markers, paint daubers, lots of other stuff on their website. So I hope you'll check it out. But if you can't wait to find out if you won these or you want to go ahead and get one of their other products, I would love it if you would use that discount code. Now let me tell you how you could enter to win one of these sets yourself. You do need to be a subscriber to my channel who is 18 years or older. This giveaway is open to residents of the United States, Canada, and the UK. To enter, you'll need to go to the Chocola YouTube channel, which I do have linked in the description box below, and subscribe to them. Then come back to this video, give it a thumbs up, and leave a comment below with your favorite product from the Chocola website. I do have it linked below so you can go check out everything they have. Then you're going to come back here, let me know which product you prefer, and make sure to include the hashtag EnterMe in your comment so I know that you're interested in the giveaway. Your comment must be left by midnight on Friday, May 15th, and then I'll be back that next week to announce the winner. 
Don't forget that I'll be back over the next few days to share some processes and some completed projects with you. If you enjoyed this video today and you want to enter the giveaway, make sure to go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.